Okay, so in problem six, we have that if f is the function given by f of x is equal to 3x squared minus x cubed, then the average rate of change of f on the closed interval 1 to 5 is. Okay, so for this, you're essentially just finding the um, slope when you connect the endpoints. So, you know, essentially, if you recall this, like f of b minus f of a over the interval from b to a. So over b minus a, it's just like it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's all it is. So what we have here is we're going to have f of 5 minus f of 1 over 5 minus 1. So we evaluate, we plug 5 into here. So 3 times 25, so 75 minus 5 cubed, so minus 125. So we have a negative 50 for f of 5. f of 1 will be 3 minus 1, so that'll be 2. And that all over 4. And then we'll have negative 52 over 4 which will simplify to negative 13. And so our answer is B. All right, number seven, if the integral from four to negative 10 of G of X, DX is equal to negative three. And if we have the integral from four to six of G of X, DX is equal to five, then what would the integral from negative 10 to six of GX, G of X be? Okay, so um, this is kind of like just using on one of the properties of integrals. If you like normally, you know, deal with integrals, obviously, you're obviously going to see, you know, the negative number or the left bound on the bottom. Like this is kind of like, a, this is like going in the opposite direction. So when you have something like this, what you can do is reverse them and this will just become the opposite. So this will become positive three. So the integral from negative 10 to four of g of x dx would be equal to positive three. And the reason we do that is because we can find the integral from negative 10 to six by adding this integral to this integral, to the integral from four to six of g of x dx. That's gonna give you, when you add these two integrals, you're gonna get this. So you're just add, basically adding three and five. Three plus five will be the integral from negative 10 to six of g of x dx. And so then your answer will just be eight. And so the answer will be D. All right, for eight, we have the function e to the x over third power. And which of the following would be the equation of the line tangent of the graph of f at the point three natural log of four comma four. Okay, so you're essentially just finding the equation of the, well, the, the tangent line, but um, what that means is you're just gonna find the, the slope of the tangent line, which is you're gonna basically find the derivative and find the derivative's value. So you remember we're gonna evaluate the derivative for x equals three natural log of four. That'll give us the slope of the tangent line. So let me just write, we have a tangent line. And we, this is slope intercept form. Looks like they're gonna have it in um, point slope form. So you're gonna have something like this, y, my, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So see this, this m will be the, value of the derivative when you plug in three natural log of four. But we're gonna to have to solve for, um, well actually we don't, we, now once we, once we get this, we just use the y, this will be like our y1 and this will be our x1. So this one will actually be pretty simple once you do that. Okay, so let's find the derivative. So f prime of x will be, we take the derivative of the exponent, which will be one third. So one third times e to the x, over three power. And then we're gonna find F prime of three natural log of four. So we're gonna evaluate this when X is three natural log of four. So one third E to the 
three natural log of four all over three. So that just becomes one third times e to the natural log of four power. Now, if you remember your um, your um, logarithmic properties, when you have the natural log raised to you know itself, when you have e raised to you know natural log of some any number, it just becomes that number. So this this whole thing just becomes one third times four, and so your slope is just four thirds. So for this equation, the point slope form, we're going to have y minus y one equals four thirds times x minus x1. And then since it's going through these two points, the y1 is the four, and the x1 will be three natural log of four. You could actually go about it and solve for slope intercept form and then see which one matches up, but this way it'll be faster. So then you can see easily that the answer is A. All right, number nine. Right here we got the graph of the function f is shown above, which of the following expresses the relationship between these three integrals. So the integral from zero to two of f of x, from zero to three of f of x, and from two to three of f of x. Okay, so let's remember um, the properties of integrals. When the function bounds, a region above the x-axis, it's, it's basically known as a positive area, positive quantity. When it's below, this is a negative quantity. We still think of it, think of it as area, because there is, you know, in real life, we always think of it as a positive area. But um, mathematically, when you were doing problems like this, this will be a negative quantity, and this will be a positive quantity. So then, if you're going to basically, you know, integrate from 0 to 3, you're going to add this number to this number. So we know the biggest, the biggest um, area or the biggest value will be the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x. That's going to be the largest because it's, only, it's, it's the only positive quantity. It's always only positive. As soon as you start messing with the other ones, you're going to get smaller because you're going to get into the negative values. So this is going to be greater than all the other ones. Now, what would come next is the integral from zero to three because it's, it's a positive plus a small negative. But what is the smallest will just be the integral from two to three because it's, it's completely negative. It's a, it's a completely negative quantity. So maybe, maybe to kind of make this a little more clear, let's just give this a number. Let's say this is, this is um, like eight or something. And then we could probably say maybe this is negative two. See, so, so from zero to two, eight is bigger than, you know, eight plus negative two, which would be this. And then obviously negative two is smaller than both of those. So let's see which one matches here. So we got the, they're doing it backwards. Looks like it's gonna be D. Because the smallest area from two to three, or the smallest integral for, will be from two to three, then from zero to three will be the middle, and then from zero to two will be the largest. So the answer will be D. Number 10. So the integral from zero to two of x cubed plus one and the one half times x squared dx is, okay, so here we're gonna use u substitution to integrate this. We're gonna make u the x cubed plus one, and then du will be three x squared dx. And then one third du will be x squared dx. So that's what we have here. And so this integral then becomes equal to one third u to the one half power 
DU. You can see the, the DU or the one third DU is at X squared DX. Now we got to make sure we change the endpoints because these endpoints are in terms of X. We got to make them in terms of U if we're going to integrate with respect to U. So when X equals zero and when X equals two, let's find what U would be. We simply plug zero into here and we would get the U would be one. And when you plug two into here, you'll get that eight plus one, you'll get the U is nine. So you're gonna get the integral from one to nine. So all you're simply doing is not integrating this value. So this will just be one third. Let me go factor out the U one third. One third U to the one half over three halves from one to nine. One third times two thirds u to the one half from one to nine. Okay, so now let's just well, now let's work the algebra out. So two thirds u to the one half. So two thirds nine to the one half or the square root of nine will be three minus two thirds. Oh no, not to the one half, whoops. To the three halves, because you gotta, whoops, gotta add one to the exponent. So I divided correctly, but I forgot to add. So, okay, the u to the three halves over three halves, u to the three halves over three halves, that three halves comes to multiply by two thirds. Okay, so then we have nine to the three halves minus two thirds times one to the three halves, all multiplied by one third. So this is just making sure you know your algebra. So two thirds. Remember nine to the three halves is just like nine to the one times nine to the one half or nine to the one half power. So this is just gonna be nine times the square root of nine because nine to the one half power is the square root of nine. So the square root of nine is three. So this becomes two thirds times nine times three minus two thirds and one to anything is just gonna be one. So that's easy to work with. And then we just get so like 27, 26. And 20, I want to make sure I don't mess up, 27, 9, 18. Oh, we got a two thirds times a 27 minus, so two thirds times a 26. This is the worst part when you mess up on these algebra parts. I used to get frustrated back in the day. I would mess up, so that would be, 52 over nine, okay, so 52 over nine will be our answer. And that'll be A. Oof. All right, looking at 11. Kind of x squared plus xy minus three y equals three, and then the point two one dy dx is Okay, so here we're gonna use implicit differentiation. So this will be differentiating x squared will be two x plus here we're gonna use the product rule. So the derivative of x will just be one, one y plus x times the derivative of y, which is just one. But since we're using implicit differentiation, we have multiplied by dy dx whenever we're differentiating y. So that's that, minus three, then again, we're gonna differentiate y. So the derivative will be three. We gotta multiply it again by dy dx equals the derivative of three, which will just be a constant. So it'll just be zero. And now this is just an algebra problem. We basically just gonna solve for dy dx. So breaking it apart, we'll have two x plus y plus a dy dx 
factoring out that x and that minus three. We're gonna subtract this. So dy dx times x minus three equals a negative two x minus y. Then we're gonna divide both sides by x minus three. I don't know why I put it in brackets and parentheses. Anyways, so then we get dy dx will be this. But we want to evaluate it at this specific point. So we want to evaluate it when x is one and when y is, or when x is two and y is one. So we're going to plug in two for x. So that'll be negative four and then one for y, negative four minus one over two minus three. We'll get negative five over negative one. We'll get five. And so our answer will be A. All right.